What's up, everyone? Thanks for joining us today for the 1004 show. We're here with Hillary Boyce Doraguzzi of Pro Hill Services. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm not always great at last names, but I figured it out. You did great. So you have started a business, and you're about month 13 right now. Yes. Tell us a little bit about Pro Hill Services. Uh, so I started my company 13 months ago. Um, mainly influenced the startup after the National Defense Authorization Act of 2016 allowed women-owned businesses to have a step forward with priority uh, consideration. So decided to go on my own and start my So own kind company. of a, a, an even bigger step to SWAM? So instead of hey, making sure... It's a different step. SWAM isn't U.S. government. That's just a state thing. Got it. If you go after Army, Navy, you know, defense stuff, SWAM doesn't even mean it. So for the government, they have minority-owned goals. They have uh, veteran-owned goals. They have women-owned goals. And so now women-owned goals have been increased. Interesting. So was, what were the percentages before of how many? I'm people? not even sure exactly, but not only did the, it change the percentages, it allowed direct awards for women-owned companies. Cool. Uh, before, you couldn't, a woman couldn't get a direct awarded company without competing through a whole bunch of legal processes, and that kind of changed. So when you way. saw that, you had had 15 years of experience in government contract, and you said, yes. hey, maybe this is something that I could do myself, or how'd that kind of... Um, I guess in the course of a week between those new laws being passed and having about six of my different mentors saying, Hillary, what are you doing killing yourself for someone else's company? When are you going to start your own? And like within a course of a week, that happened many, many times. And I'm like, you know, maybe I should think about this. It wasn't a thought out plan beforehand, um, but the time was right. So you had never thought about starting a company before? I hadn't, no. You know, there's um, a lot of people say, are you born an entrepreneur or are you not? I think that you might be born an entrepreneur, but it might be a light switch where True. something pops up and says, oh, I might be able to do that. It sounds True. like it's, it's, it's kind of your moment. And, and, and my husband had influenced me from day one. You know, I'm a workaholic. I've always been that way. It isn't a temporary phase. I don't have an off switch. And so he's, you know, he's like, no, you're killing yourself for someone else's company. Why don't you think about opening up your own? So from day one meeting him, he's kind of always kind of pushed me in that direction. So several things kind of collided where like, so he encouraged it's you. It's time. He did encourage me, and he still does today. A lot of significant others, you, you, when, when you start working with a lot of them, some of them love to help. Some of them seem to not encourage. Right. It's good to see that he is. How much of the business do you tell him? Um, like, do you guys get really nitty-gritty? Like, Well, he owns his own business as well. Huh. So we both work from home when we're not traveling. So telling him or not, he kind of overhears my phone calls, my interviews, my employee training remotely. So he... He hears a lot, you know. So for someone that's listening and they don't really understand the government contract world, right? Because it, it's a big world. It you is know, very multi-billion dollar world. Like, what happens in a government contract? How do you win it? What type of business can you get? Um, lots of things are outsourced out from the Department of Defense, for example, to be contracted out. Whether it's supplies, whether it's services. My company only is focusing on services. Okay. Um, so. Say, for example, let's just say the local Navy base needs help augment augmentating their current staff with HR clerks. They'll put a contract out for five HR clerks to sit side by side with their military to help them. That's just an example. Every organization has, it could be supply clerks, it could be language interpreters, it could be, you know, the, it's the sky's the limit. Um, so, you know, when the government says they have a need, they then put out government solicitation documents that opens it up for companies, many companies, to then write competitive proposals to try to win the work. So they write technical proposals on how would we handle it, how would we help, how we understand, and then of course, um, who can do it for the best price. So then you you bid on on the work, yeah. and then let's say you win the work, then you have to go find the staff to be able to fulfill that, or? True, but I typically like to pre-recruit before I submit my proposal, so I kind of know that I have that talent makes sense you know and, and I know what that talent costs because if you do it backwards you could be not be able to afford what you what you sure said you could fulfill so I kind of do it in my way it's the right it's the right way but it's sure. kind of you know I kind of pre-recruit contingently a lot of time that means hey I didn't win the contract I can't hire you but at least you I have think a, a lot of people don't know their numbers and I think that in your case exactly you you have you, to kind of know what you can afford before you submit that sure. price because if you come back and win it and you didn't pre-recruit and then you come to find out your your talent is up here and you bid here, you're right. going to have an issue. <laughs> you're you're a veteran of four years in the Army. Thank Army, you. Yes. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Um, 
beat Navy. Oh, yeah. Right? That finally. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> um, a big game um, this past year in the yes. Army-Navy game. Um, when you were in the in the Army, what prepared you kind of to go down this entrepreneurial route, even if it was um, 15 years later? You know, the Army kind of prepared me to then be a contractor. I don't think at that point I was ready to be an entrepreneur, but I think it prepared me. It, it gave me the love in my heart to take care of the families and the service members, and because that's what I want my company to do and what we're doing. Um, through progression of being a contract employee at the bottom, I've learned the ropes to, and went up to now, then have been ready to be an entrepreneur. So I wasn't ready yeah. 15 years ago at all. But you prepared yourself. I did, step by step. Um, I had learned enough to be prepared with my own bag of knowledge to now open up my own company. Bag of knowledge, I'm going to steal that. I yeah. like that. You like that? Yeah. I just came up with that. Uh, it's, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> so, so you gave yourself a bag of knowledge, and because of that, you then saw because some people were kind of pushing you and saying, hey, we think that you're talented enough and, and knowledgeable enough to do this, maybe you should start your own business. What type of resources or what did you Google first when you thought of kind of um, starting a business? Well, again, I didn't do this with any planning, which again, I strongly would recommend folks to plan it better than I did. Um, I first Googled and I came up with a company name after about 10 minutes of thinking. So going online, searching you know the state website on what company names were taken. Yeah. Um, that was my first first thing I did. Um, you know. Was there a name that you wanted that was taken? I really no, not really. I didn't even know what I wanted. I just wanted it to be something that. Um, so you, you didn't know, want to be Hillary Services? I didn't want to be Hillary Services because it's not all about me. You know, my goal was for this company to have many many employees that are then doing the work, yeah. uh, supporting the, you know the agencies that were, we got contracts for, but. Um, so how'd you come up with Pearl Hill? Pearl Hill? I came up with Pearl Hill Services. You know, services, of course, because I want my company to provide professional services. Uh, I'm not doing construction, not doing supplies. So the services is the core of what we're doing. Uh, Pro Hill kind of stands for the professionals. So professionals, Hills. Hills kind of came up as an afterthought, of course, my name being Hillary. Mm. Um, it, so there it, is a correlation. There, there is a correlation, but with Hills, you know, every time you're performing on anything, there's valleys and peaks and downs, and you know where the professionals that care. That's part of my logo. That are gonna, um, they're gonna conquer all of the issues and work through it, and, and hopefully have a happy customer at the end of every day. We were we were talking earlier about things to maybe spend money on and things not to. Yes. You uh, people can learn about you and go to your website prohillservices.com. Yes. Um, but you said you know you didn't really want to invest a lot of money into a website, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, and even really want to spend a hundred dollars because yes. it's something that you don't necessarily get business off of. You're not Amazon, so don't put a lot of money into right. it. Like there are some smarts to that. I think a lot of people will spend a lot of money on a brochure website oh, yeah. when you realize that hey, I can spend an hour on Wix. Right, right, because my me winning work is not through someone Googling my company and finding it at the top of the SEO and buying that product. My me winning work is me submitting proposals th to the con government via mail, via email, and then opening up that and evaluating what I said. You know, um, I know I need a website, but it doesn't get me work. How and, so, you... and so I did. I, I started yeah. a Wix website, spent zero money. Um, there were several things that I knew going in that I didn't have the budget for. I wasn't going to spend until I had to, like recruiting cost. I'm a full advocate that to recruit people, you should spend a lot of money. Yeah. I'm not paying $1,000 for a job ad. I'm not paying 5000 for a booth at a job fair. You know, the, the, there's so many resources out there to connect with the talent, uh, whether it's, you know, the military transition offices on bases where they're free resources to help you connect with who, you, who you're looking Do for. Do you think you know that because you have insight because you were there or? Probably, probably. No, I mean, I mean that, that's... You know that's that's your IP. You know that is, most people is. don't have. What, you, know, you know, even Facebook, for example. Sure. I mean, you know, every military community has a a free group. You know, say for example, uh, Fort Belvoir military spouses group. If I was hiring at Fort Belvoir, I'm going to join that group and post in that group for free, and I'm going to get people that are probably available, bored, educated. So people that live in that area, displaced, that might be a spouse, military yeah. spouses. You know, I mean, it's just a, a, a way to get to you know, the local talent. I think it's it's really important for people to not spend a lot of money. Of course. Right? And, and I was telling you earlier, I think we're in the business. Obviously, we want people to buy our products and things like that, come to our events. But I would much rather have someone, like, spend 30 bucks with us and realize that, hey, I, this isn't for me. Right. Then to spend $30,000 on something right. and be like, wow, like, right. I, I really didn't understand that path I was going right. down. Well, and especially with me starting, I mean, I knew personally I wasn't going to be drawing a salary 
for quite some time, and, and that's painful. You know, having, have you started paying yourself yet? I have now, just now, but the first year I did not, and so I haven't told anybody this publicly. Um, you heard it here first. But um, <laughs> I personally bought my groceries and paid myself because in the evenings and weekends, I turned the Uber on, and I was yeah. an Uber driver to pay for me to my business to run. And so, um, I think ego aside is what people have to get. Hey, you know, I, I am, am. There's three shifts of work in my sure. day, and I think that uh, for everybody that I know that's that's making it happen, they have that same. I think so many people forget, and they they see this um, celebration of business owners, and they don't understand that, or they or they they only see this good side, and they're not really right. willing to do whatever right. it takes to get there. I know that there have been years where. Um, maybe from a you know a press standpoint or an exposure standpoint we were growing but financially we weren't and right. so on the back end of that kind of like you with uber i had to do other things too you gotta do what you and have to do. look it sucks it's not what you want to do but for you to be able to continue forward with what you want to do in life right which is to help supply um those services through pro hill like you you might have to do that and so right. i had to um there was a website called Fiverr, uh, which was it's ridiculous. It's selling services that start at $5. Okay. And I found a way to make several thousand dollars on this website one year because that several thousand is what I needed to get by. Okay. And kind of like you Ubering, like it's 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 what you have to do sometimes. Okay. And, I, and I think that um, I commend you for saying that because so many people are just like, oh, it's so beautiful, it's so easy. And right. it's like, mm, like that there's this roller coaster ride right. and even when you're going up for one thing you might be going down on another but you got to remember you're doing this for the long term not for the short term and how, that's that's very important i think how did you get that mindset and realizing that it's not a one day plan it's a, a hundred year plan i just i've told i actually wrote that down on a piece of paper and it's sitting on top of my desk and i remind myself that often through this 13 month you know what does it say it says you know this is for the long term this is not for today you're doing this for the long term love so. it what are some of the biggest challenges over the last 13 months and what do you see as kind of your next challenge as you continue to um me personally you know i started my company with not i didn't save up for it i didn't have investors i didn't have that so you know financially you know, though i have now won several several contracts with the department of defense every win is a financial kind of stressor behind the scenes because you have to front the payroll the benefits and all that stuff before the government invoices you, which pays your invoice, which could take a couple months. Sure. And so that capital that I have found is really not available for the small business that doesn't get have tax returns, that doesn't have those things, is is a is a, is a huge hurdle. Are there uh, service providers out there in kind of the accounting world, in the financial services world, that will? Um, provide it easier for that so I mean you're based on what 30 to 90 180 on something no, 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 no. You, you can't really give Department of Defense a net okay you know they will pay you sure but it takes a lot of channels of approvals and you know but knowing to, that you're gonna get that money is you, you know you're you gonna can... get it I've noticed right now it's been a probably 90 to 120 day wow. turnaround and you know and, and I know I'm gonna get it the government is always good to know that that's one good thing is they will pay they're not going bankrupt right I'm not going wood. Um, but, uh, this is hopefully you know, what? you just have to make sure, you know, you've, what was the question? <laughs> Are, like, so someone that is in, but it's similar to net 90, net 120, right? Just, so you know you're not going to get paid immediately. Like, what are some ways that you can front I mean, that money? There maybe are a lot of companies else's? out there that will, like, um, like, buy your invoice for you. But I personally didn't use those because those all have, like, 20 to 30% interest. And right. as a small business... Your margin isn't that 20, could 30%. be your margin. Right. You, you know, have thirty-one you know, percent margin. Right. You're paying them thirty. You're at one percent. Yeah. Right. Right. So it's 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 very important to have somewhere you can get some money for, it or you really can't grow. You know, organic growth's great, but you gotta have. Is there one metric that you track more than others? Like maybe not just revenue, maybe not just expenses. Is there? Well, I mean, money is, is one thing to track, but customer satisfaction to me is another thing that I track, you know. Um, How do you track that? Um, I, I, I pulse all of my customers via electronic surveys, um, reaching out and talk to them. I like electronic surveys because then I have something in writing. Mm -hmm. um, but to win and continue to win work, you have to list your previous past performance. And so if you don't do good for your first contract, 
probably not going to get this. Can you leverage one. that kind of survey to get yes, an answer? Yes. What yes. What tool do you use for that? It, it, you just have to put in your proposal. So yeah. whether you warp it into a PDF and attach it in, whatever, you just have to have that in your documents. Got it. Um, what is the What is your favorite kind of um, business tool to use day to day? I'm a I'm a I'm a big fan of of Google products, the, yeah. the Gmail, the sharing documents. I know there's probably a lot of other things out there, but couldn't live without it. That's what I we use. We use that too. Not, I mean, not just the Google. You know, the, the email. I share, I share documents with Document my employees. Documents, sheets, yes, everything. yes. Um, I'm using that for uh, timesheets, where I can see instantly what people are recording. I know there's a lot of providers out there, but I'm not ready to buy those yet. I, you know, I'm not at the size where I need those. Well, if you can do it for a couple of uh, people on your team, and you can do it using Google Suites, why not? That's what I'm doing right now. How much do you sleep a night? Um, not much. I think Have you ever at, tracked it? I think it, at three o'clock last night, I wrote on my Facebook that sleep was overrated. Um, sometimes I'll get some good sleep. Um, sometimes I don't. I can. Some people say you sleep in your dad. I, I did say that did, too before yeah. on my Facebook, but um, I, I can function very well off of a nap. I love naps. Okay. Power naps, I can go. They are amazing. Um, there's a tool that I learned about called Fizz, P Z I Z Z, I think. Okay. That um, I guess it puts sounds in it, it's, <laughs> but it's it, it just helps you sleep for like cat nap and then it wakes you back I'm up. I'm good. It's, it's, a nap, I'm good. Yeah, love it. Um, I love naps. You talked about goals. Yes. How do you set your goals, and how are you kind of like, looking at them to make sure that you? I have a I've written a five year plan. Each year kind of increments um, my targets, where I want to be, where I want to grow, um, as far as you know infrastructure. So I kind of have that also beside my computer on my desk, where I keep looking at because it keeps me in check. Like I have to remember I'm a small company. I'm not going to write a proposal for a 200 person contract. I have to remind myself because you can't win that, or because I want healthy growth. I'd rather have five contracts with five people each mm -hmm. instead of one huge bang that then is unmanageable. Unmanageable financial, unmanageable just... Having a diverse portfolio. Yes. And making sure Slow that you Slow steps to growth instead of one huge... For someone that action. didn't go to business school, you seem to have a lot of business sense. Um, let me just say that I have a very smart mother. Did she go to business school? She did not, but she is very wise in many ways. She yeah. is a um, missionary in Kenya, wow. and she's a retired school teacher. And she's, uh, she's given me a lot of hard work ethic has been instilled in me because of her. I, I think finding that work ethic, and usually it's from your parents, I would guess. Yes. Um, I know for me, it was from my mom, who for 20, 30 years, um, split family, uh, basically. Um, she worked three jobs. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't realize, I, I think growing up, you kind of have an idea of like, okay, this is tough. Yeah. But you don't necessarily recognize how maybe bad uh -huh. it was. Um, and and um, the kids shouldn't know, you know. I guess the kids shouldn't. Well, I think that's, that's that was it. She didn't want it. She yeah. didn't want it. Do you have a family? I do. I have uh, three children, three sons. How old are they? Um, eight, eleven, sixteen. All boys. And do you think that they what like as this world is turning into maybe a more um, entrepreneurial life? Right. What are you encouraging them to do? I'm actually encouraging my children, my my oldest, to be a part of my company. Cool. Um, I have him doing some work for me. And, um, you know, I'm not going to force him to do this when he gets older, but I want him to, to learn about stuff, you know, other than just the stereotypical fast food restaurant that 16 year olds get their first job at. And so I have him doing some there's things an, for I, me. I worked at Domino's up there. And, and, and I, I, I worked at Pizza Hut, you know, but I, there's things that I just, uh, I want him to, I want him to have a choice to be a part of the company or not. And I think that's definitely the world that we're going to is, yeah. is being able to make more decisions. Right. And it's not all the paths aren't are exactly what they were. Once again, you talked about mentors. Yes. Um, what does a mentor look like to you? And kind of what, like, <clears throat> do you know that you have a mentor while you're having them? Or um, I personally, long term, have had two uh, male uh, army general officers throughout um, my my career that have mentored me, um, and they may not have know, knew that they were my mentor. They've just been great. Um, great family men, great businessmen, great ethics, and um, so someone that you look up to can talk to. Yes, and that encouraged me to do this on my own. Um, so you know, those are those are you know, I know a lot of I'm in a lot, part of a lot of women in defense groups and, and women groups where it's woman power, and I'm all about woman power. But my mentors have both been men, and uh, uh, how, you know. how important are groups like that to people to um, to, to jump in and and. 
Not not the women piece of it. Right. Not, not, just, any group. Ju- just a group. I, I personally get a lot of lot out of being a part of organizations locally. You know, um, not not just for encouragement, networking. You know, hey, I you know, they're all they've all kind of been where I'm at maybe right. five years a road so they kind of can help me advise me if you ask and reach out if you go to these functions you sit there don't talk you know you'll get nothing but if you, sure. you actually talk to people and and you know make friends you know you can get a lot out of it i think creating friends is one of the most important things it and is so many people because you never know what go in and they're just have. like here's my card give me business right right but if no, you try right. and create a relationship with someone yes you know when you're at those events when it's right. just card collecting events right, right they they are what they are and they, they work are. for some people sounds like they don't work for you and I and that and that's fine like we want to create relationships with people so that we can be doing that long term so 13 months to the day basically what are the next 13 what's your goal in the next 13 years well I've kind of told myself for the next four months I'm not going to grow anymore I need to kind of slow down with the growth engine because uh, I can do that pretty well I just need to kind of sustain I need to put some some infrastructure in place get some policies get some procedures get a little bit of help hired at my headquarters, um, and then I'll hit it going again. But for the next four months, I need to kind of pump the brakes with growth because there's lots yeah. to do just to maintain so the, operations. You got done with the bowl of spaghetti, throw on the wall, you see what's stuck. Now right. it's figuring out how to right. how to make those things happen over and over and over. So I'm just going to slow down so I can just position myself for the next integration of growth. Awesome. ProHillServices.com is the website. And yeah. uh, Hillary, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.